Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Erica and I'm so glad that you were here for today's video because today we are talking all about craft fairs and markets. Whether you've done craft fairs and markets in the past and you just want a little refresher or maybe you just want some more tips and advice to improve for the next time or maybe you're a brand new small business owner who's doing your very first craft fair. Either way, you're not gonna wanna miss this video and you might wanna grab a notebook and a pen to take some notes because I have a ton of tips and advice that I'm giving you guys and there might be something that you wanna write down. So let's go ahead and jump into it. You have to be your biggest fan. And when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that. Okay, so first we are going to talk about getting prepared for your craft fair or market because you obviously don't want to wait until the last minute to get ready for it. You want to be ready as far in advance as you can so that you're ready when the time comes. So right off the bat, tip number one is if you plan on doing any outdoor events, then you need to get a tent. I highly recommend that out of all the things that you can kind of cut corners and cheap out on, your tent is not one of them. You need to get a good tent tent that has good reviews that you can depend on. I did a ton of research before purchasing my tent. This is not sponsored at all, by the way, but I have a, it's called a Euromax or Euromax. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but I'll put the link in the description for you guys. I absolutely love it. It is such high quality. It also comes with like sides and windows that you can zip up around your tent. So it is just amazing for any weather I need to do a craft fair in. And I say all of this because I have seen so many mishaps with some of the cheaper alternative tents that you can get. I'm sure there are other brands out there that are just as good. That's just personally the one that I went with because it had a ton of good reviews and I've had mine for almost like seven, eight years and it's never failed me. One of the very first craft fairs that I did, there was only a small chance of rain, but of course it rained and the vendor next to me had one of those like cheaper tents that I think you can get at like Walmart or Sam's Club that just like expand and it looks like one of those like blue tarps just kind of like draped over it a little bit. Um, but her tent completely collapsed once the water like filled up in her canopy, busted a hole in it, and then all of her product got soaked. Her and all of her customers also got soaked and she had to pack up and leave early. So I say that in hopes that that doesn't happen to any of you guys because that would just be devastating. So make sure you get a good tent and make sure you also buy the weights for your tent. You don't have to buy like the little sandbag weights that they sell on Amazon. Some tents do come with them, but you can also buy them separate or you can just like bring some like bricks or something and kind of like tie them to your tent if you want to go that way. But I definitely recommend that you get some weights for your tent because I've also seen a ton of people who didn't have weights on theirs and their tent completely lifted off of the ground or was like knocking over their display. So that would also be horrible. So get some weights for your tent as well. You're also going to need some type of displays or tables, something to put all of your product on. You don't have to do like a full booth of tables. You could just have like one table. You could have a nice display and you don't even have to buy a super nice display. You could also DIY one to save some money. And with that, you might also want to think about getting some type of like table cover or backdrop or something that you can lay over your table. They also have these like super stretchy table covers that you can get on Amazon that I see a ton of people using and highly recommend. I'll link those down in the video description for you as well. I personally use these like vinyl backdrops that people use for like photos. Mine have like this old shiplap barnwood kind of vibe to them and I just drape mine over the table and kind of tie it back so that it looks like it's a solid piece of wood all the way around. I just think it looks nicer but I like that they're vinyl so that if they do get wet it's completely fine it's not going to hurt it at all or if someone spills something on it I can literally just wipe it off with a Clorox wipe and it's not going to damage it at all but you could certainly get like the cloth table covers I've seen people use curtains or sheets or fabric from the store you can do whatever you want to do but on that note the nicer it looks the better chance that you're going to sell more of your inventory because you're going to look super put together and professional and everything will be cohesive and nice. Another thing that you can do to get prepared that I highly recommend doing is tagging everything and doing inventory beforehand. That's just one less thing that you have to worry about the day of. Also by doing this ahead of time, you can kind of inventory everything. I do everything on a Google spreadsheet. Now I do know a ton of people that have successful shows and they don't inventory their items. 
Personally, I do it for several different reasons. Number one, I can easily see what I have in stock, what sold, what I should make more of for my next craft fair, but also because I can see exactly what was stolen. Whenever I go to pack all my stuff up at the craft fair, I can kind of check things off as I go and I can see what grew legs and walked away because unfortunately, that's something that happens to most of us at some point or another. Unfortunately, it's just how it is. And the third most important reason why I do an inventory list is because it also helps me big time for tax time. Because on these inventory sheets, so I have like a little SKU number for myself. I don't put that on my tags, but then I have like an item description. And then I also have a column where I put the price that I sold the item at. And then I have another column of what that item cost me to make. So I can see exactly how much profit I had after each craft fair. I can see exactly how much profit I have per item. I can see what's worth it and doing again or not doing the next time at all. So I just always recommend doing an inventory list because it has helped me stay super organized and it's just super easy to track all of your costs, profit, and losses. I also recommend that you try doing like a trial setup like in your backyard or driveway or garage or whatever just so you can see number one how long it takes you to set up number two you can kind of get a feel for everything because once you have that tent up it's really easy to start putting out your furniture and inventory and then quickly realize crap I don't have enough space where is this going to go and then you start freaking out um, it's happened to me before so I just highly recommend that you do like a little trial run set up so you can see exactly how you're going to set up the day of and you're not scrambling to figure out where everything's going to fit and go and on that note definitely recommend taking just a quick little picture of that number one you can use that picture for like future craft fair applications because a lot of people want to see the booth that you have before admitting you into their craft fair as a vendor or you can use that picture to post on social media to kind of market yourself before the craft fair but all also, I like having a picture so that you can pull it up the day of and just be like, okay, that's going to go there. That's going to go there. That's going to go there. You can use that picture as a reference to make the setup go as smoothly and quickly as possible. And if you do a trial run setup and you know exactly how much time it's going to take you, then you can kind of like plan a whole schedule for the day. Okay, I'm going to wake up at this time. It takes me this long to get ready. It takes me this long to eat breakfast and have my coffee. Maybe you need to run to the bank and get some money out, but then you know exactly how much time it takes took you to set up and that you can plan for that ahead of time. I highly recommend that you get yourself like a little toolbox. I actually use like a tackle box that I got from Walmart, but it has like a pair of scissors in there. It has tape, it has extra tags. It has a small little extension cord, some sanitizer or some like hooks to hang stuff on or like the little metal pegs for your pegboard. If you're using like a pegboard display, it comes in handy every single time and I've used it at every craft fair. So I highly recommend that you get yourself one and put everything that you could imagine that you might need. I'm talking even like band-aids, aspirin, pens, a sharpie, whatever, so that you are prepared for anything because anything and everything can go wrong at a craft fair. I also recommend that you get yourself like a little cash bag or like a fanny pack that you can put your cash in or even like a locked cash box. And if you are using a cash box, then I highly recommend that you either like screw it into like where you're doing checkout or I just recommend that you have someone there with you because I can't tell you how many horror stories I've heard where like two people will come into a booth, one person will distract the person that is selling all the product and their accomplice will go around and steal the cash box and run off with it. So I've heard a ton of those stories. So just be safe, have someone there with your cash box. So just know you never wanna leave your cash box or cash bag unattended. If you have someone there with you, great. If you don't, you might wanna keep it on you at all times. I also recommend that you get cash out for your event at least one or two days before. You don't wanna wait until the morning of to go get cash out for change because you just never know. An ATM might be out of money or you can't get enough cash back at Walmart or whatever. So don't wait till the last minute, get your cash out for change a day or two before just so you have it and you're prepared. I also highly recommend that you pack everything you can the night before, whether you're using like your minivan or a trailer or a friend's truck or whatever. If you can pack the night before, I highly recommend doing it so that you're not scrambling around the morning of. 
I always pack everything, product displays, everything the night before. And I also want to mention that you should put your tables and displays on the very top or the front of your load so that it's like the first things that you pull out. Because one time I didn't do that and I had all of my tables underneath my product and stuff and I had to basically take everything out of our car and then take out the tables and then I was able to set up. So save yourself that headache, put your tables and displays on top or in the front so that they're the first thing you pull out then you can set those up and then immediately put all of your product on. My tent is super heavy, so I wouldn't wanna put that like right on top of my products, but I always put it in a spot where I can like grab it out first and then my tables and then my displays come out and then all of my products come out. That is the easiest way, I promise, trust me. I also highly recommend that you dress comfortably, especially your shoes, you guys. I cannot stress this enough. One of my first craft fairs, I dressed kind of comfortably. I was cute, but I didn't wear like super comfortable tennis shoes. Halfway through my craft fair, my feet were covered in blisters. My feet hurt so bad when I got home, I had to soak them. So save your feet and wear comfortable shoes. I also recommend that you bring like a folding chair or like a stool or something to set on as you can. I know it's busy and most of us are on our feet like the entire time, but you might want to bring a chair for when you can sit down. And I highly recommend that you bring yourself like a little cooler or something with snacks and some water or caffeine if it's a super long day. Okay, now I want to talk about marketing, not just at your craft fair, but before your craft fair happens. Okay, so firstly, I recommend that if you're a small business owner, you should already have social media to market yourself, to sell your products. So with that, you want to film all kinds of behind the scenes content basically documenting everything you're doing to get ready for the craft fair beforehand all the way leading up to the day of your craft fair you're going to want to post as much as you can so if you are hand making a bunch of items film that film all kinds of angles maybe film like a hyperlapse of you getting ready you packing your car you buying things for the craft fair you building your displays you tagging products you just filming your products like showing what's going to be at your craft fair everything you can document you're going to want to do that Every Everything is content, trust me. And you're gonna wanna do this for a few reasons. Number one, you wanna try to get people, especially nearby that are like local to you, that can actually come to the craft fair. So if you can get followers before your craft fair, if you don't already have a following, then that's gonna be awesome. So that you can have local people coming to meet you at the craft fair and checking your products out and maybe you'll get some sales because you posted about it ahead of time on social media. But I also recommend doing that so that when someone finds you the day of at the craft fair, like it's a brand new customer, they check out your social media, you already will have like a little bit of an established page. You'll have some content posted that they can check out and it's just another way to connect with that customer. The more professional and established you look, the better. But then for me personally, I also like having all of that stuff documented because I can kind of go back and see how much I've grown since my first craft fair. I can see all of the changes in my booth or the products that I sold and I can just see how I kind of evolved over the years. So it's kind of cool just for like personal reasons to document all that stuff. But also with having a small business, it's kind of required to have social media now in order to grow. So the more you post, the better it'll be for your business. If you can, I highly recommend that you post about the craft fair like a month in advance, two weeks before, one week before, and then every day the week of the craft fair, I would be posting about it. Maybe you don't wanna make a post about it every day, I would at least put it on your stories so that you can kind of hype up your following before your craft fair. And then obviously the day of, I would recommend posting like on your story, make a post, maybe post on your story throughout the day, engage with customers at the craft fair, Maybe you can get some of their handles and tag them in your story. It's going to get more people to follow your social media. And then as far as marketing at the actual craft fair, I recommend that you get yourself like a sign or banner. You do not have to go all out and spend a bunch of money on getting professional banners, although that does look more professional and established. I personally got two banners made for my small business from a local sign shop while they were having a like buy one get one free sale or maybe it was like buy one get one half off or something. So I definitely recommend that you check out some local shops first. It'll probably be way cheaper than what you can order it for online. But even if you don't want to do that, you can also make your own 
sign. You can buy an old chalkboard or you can get like a piece of acrylic at like Home Depot or Lowe's and put some vinyl on it or paint your own sign on a piece of wood or something. There are a ton of DIY options. You don't have to spend a ton of money on professional banners if you don't have it. You can always DIY everything that you're gonna need. Now, whatever you decide to go with, I recommend that you have your name of your business, your logo, your website. If you have your own website, maybe you only sell on Etsy, I would put that on there. But then I would also include all of your social medias like on the very bottom, maybe like a little bit smaller so that it's listed somewhere and people can check you out from there. I always get a lot of followers the day of and the day after a craft fair and I think it's because I market my social media on there a lot. I have my social media as displayed on my banner but I also have them on signs. I also have them on a lot of the product tags. And then on that note, you can also use QR codes. You can use small business cards or like little postcards or flyers. You can also get like pens, stickers, magnets with your business name and info on them. I have a little circle device called a Popple, P-O-P-L. I'll link mine in the description down below for you guys. But you can choose the free plan, which is what I have. You just pay like a one-time fee for the actual device, which it is like super, super tiny. And it's like a sticker. You can literally put it on the back of your phone if you want. But basically they just take their phone, they press it up against to it. And then my page, it kind of looks like a link tree, if you know what that is, listed on their phone where it has like my website, it'll have like my picture, it'll have all my social media handles or any other links I post on there. So that's super easy because I used to do business cards and then I would always see them like on the ground on the way back to my car when I was all done. And not just mine, there's always a ton of other vendor business cards that I see laying all over the ground, all by the trash can, whenever I'm leaving these craft fairs. So I personally stopped getting business cards made and I just started using my little Popple device so they can just put their phone up to it and then all of my information pops up on their phone and they can follow me on whatever they wanna follow me on. Or I have QR codes set up where they can just scan it with their phone and same thing, all of my information pulls up super easily for them. But like I said, a lot of my product tags have all of my information on them, my website, my social media handles and everything. So if someone wants like something physical to hold that has all of my information on it, it's on the product tag if they bought a product. Now, if you wanna step up your marketing game and you have a little bit of money to spend on your business, then I would recommend like getting like, you know, stickers, pens, or magnets made with all of your information on them, or getting your own like personal bags made to put merchandise in that people buy that has like your logo on it or your website. Maybe it has your social media handles or like whatever you want on there so that when someone buys something, they're walking around with your bag. That's a walking advertisement, like for everyone else walking around the craft fair, they'll see that bag. Or if it's clear and they see the cute stuff in it and they see your logo on it, okay, I'm gonna stop there later. They just mentally catalog that and then maybe they'll stop by your booth later because they saw so many people walking around with your bags. All right, now we're gonna jump into one of the biggest parts on having a successful craft fair and that is displays. I truly believe the key to sales is having your stuff displayed nicely. The better display you have, the more products you're probably going to sell. You want your displays to be visually appealing to the customers. You want to draw them into your booth if they were just walking by, you wanna catch their eye and make them want to come in and look at your products. Cause at craft fairs where you're surrounded by a ton of other really cool vendors, half the battle is getting people to come into your booth. So if you can create displays that are eye catching and visually appealing to make those customers come into your booth, you're already halfway to the sale. Because in theory, your product should be good enough that it sells itself, right? So the displays are the other half of that. So I always recommend that you try to elevate your displays as much as possible. Most craft fairs I've ever done, they've been like 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12 space. So you're always really limited on the square footage you have to actually display stuff. And like your tent takes up a lot of room, the tables and displays will take up a lot of room. So I always recommend if you can build up 
try to use as much vertical space as possible and i say this for one of two reasons number one obviously like i just said you're limited on the square footage so if you can use as much space as you can between the top of your tent and the ground i highly recommend that you do so and number two it's just more visually appealing people are scanning your booth up and down to try to look at everything you're wanting to catch their eye from afar so if you have a booth that has a ton of displays that are like really tall and their booth just looks like it is filled with product versus a booth next to it that just has a few tables where everything's just laid out flat on the table. Which booth are you going to be more inclined to go into? Personally, I would go into the one where they obviously took way more time thinking out their displays and how they are putting up their product versus the ones that just threw all their product on top of a table like they were at a flea market and didn't really put much time into their displays. So you can do this a bunch of ways. You can obviously build displays that are taller. Maybe you sell t-shirts so you can have like hanging racks or like a pegboard or maybe you sell like signs or paintings you can put like a wire rack and hang your stuff up high personally i would use all kinds of like boxes and buckets and just all kinds of trays and stuff to put my products in but then sometimes i would like take some crates and stack them on top of each other so that i could set stuff within the crates kind of like shelves but then i could also set stuff on top so it's just making my booth more visually appealing it's making them you know scan all around and try to like look at everything you want to have as much stuff as you can in there without like being super overwhelming now on that note I will say from personal experience all of the products that I had from like waist level to eye level always sell well and I highly recommend that you put like your best selling product whether you know what that is or not maybe you have like a really good feeling about a product but put that best selling product right at eye level because it is going to do even better there versus you putting it like on a table or whatever. If you put something right at eye level where they can't miss it, you're more likely to sell that product. You want to try to have everything really convenient to grab. You don't want to put everything where they have to ask you to get it or get it down. For me personally, I'm super like shy and kind of socially awkward. I know it may not seem that way, but I am. And if I was at a craft fair and there was like multiple things on like a top shelf that I couldn't reach or you have to like get permission to get it down or whatever. Personally, I would probably just keep walking and I would end up not getting it because I hate asking for help. I hate feeling like I'm like a bother or an inconvenience. I know they probably want my cell, but if they're helping someone else, I'm not going to stand there and wait to ask for help. You know what I mean? So personally, I think if it's like easy for them to grab and get to, that's obviously going to be more convenient for them and you'll probably sell more of that product. To level up your displays, I also recommend that if you are doing a craft fair or market like during a seasonal or like a holiday time that you decorate your booth accordingly it just makes it warm and welcoming and I promise you will get compliments if you do that every single time like if I've had a craft fair in the spring I'll put like some like floral garlands up there or I'll like just display flowers around my booth at Christmas time I had garland and like ornaments hanging from the top of my roof or um, one time I did a nighttime craft fair and so I had Christmas lights like all over my booth and I got a ton of compliments on it even customers that didn't end up buying anything I just had a ton of people coming in and looking because I think they were enticed to come in because my booth was so decorated and just was super welcoming. I also recommend that you keep your booth fully stocked throughout the craft fair like as people are buying things put more inventory up whether you have duplicates of an item or not. I would try to keep it fully stocked because if someone walks by halfway through the craft fair maybe you've done really well and you've sold the majority of your inventory. If you don't have anything to stock you don't have anything to stock but halfway through your craft fair if you've sold the majority of your inventory and you have a lot of bare spots around your booth that might impact how the second half of your craft fair is going to go and a lot of people might walk by because they feel like you don't have much left to look at. Now if you do have duplicates of an item then I recommend that you only put out like two or three of it and no more than that because personally anytime I had like a full peg of something or like a full 
crate of something I didn't sell as many versus when I just put a few in there because they see that there's only one two three of an item and then they almost like kind of panic oh my gosh there's only a couple of these left I have to go ahead and buy it and it's like an impulse purchase you want to get as many impulse purchases as you can so I always put out like two or three of something if I have duplicates of it so that it's an impulse buy and they'll want to get it right then because they don't want to miss out on it. Now this next tip is a really big one that I see a ton of people making this mistake and that is not pricing your things clearly. Whether you are pricing all of your stuff individually and they have their each individual price tag or you have a sign that has all of your pricing clearly listed and stated on there. I see a ton of people that don't put prices on anything and then they kind of just leave the customers like wondering how much stuff is and they have to ask that vendor how much the product is if it were me like I said before I'm socially awkward I won't ask for help so if I see something and it doesn't have a price clearly marked on it I will literally set it down and walk away I will not ask how much something is because it's just awkward for me and I know I'm not the only one that's like that even for people that aren't shy and awkward maybe you are helping another customer someone shouldn't have to wait on your conversation to finish to ask you how much something is now i understand like if you're you know like a really big artist and you have some like really expensive pieces in there that maybe you don't want to list the price because it's a super high price and you kind of need to like defend it or explain to the customer why your pricing is the way it is but if that's the case you should be proud of your pricing and stand by it because I get it. Some things are worth the time and money that you put into it. However, if you're firm on your pricing and you're not doing like a negotiation of each individual item, why wouldn't you go ahead and just put a tag on it so that they don't have to ask? It's more convenient for the customer. It's going to be easier for you. Now I've seen a ton of people where they only have like a few set products. So they don't have to individually price every single item with its own tag. They will put up a sign and they'll put, you know, t-shirt $20 long sleeve shirt $30, sweatshirt $40, and that's totally fine too. As long as your pricing is clearly stated where everyone can see it without a problem, you're good. Personally, I like to tag everything so that there's no questioning on it and it's just easier for everyone to just pick up something and look at the bottom of it, oh, okay, that's the price, and not have to look around for a sign or look around for me to tell them what the price of something is. The easier you make it for the customer to get your product, the more sales you're going to get. So make sure your prices are clearly listed and stated somewhere. I always recommend that you either do some type of sale or maybe if you don't wanna do a sale, maybe you have like a little oopsie bin or a clearance bin that has some items that either haven't sold in the past or maybe there's just like small little imperfections on them but you can sell them at a cheaper price. Have a little discount clearance bin or shelf or box or whatever in your booth because I promise people will buy them for a cheaper price. I use a little crate that I put all of like my clearance stuff in and I would say like 98% of the time it gets completely wiped out. Now I also run sales for my craft fairs specifically like for example like I might do buy two freshies get one free or buy a t-shirt get one half off or whatever. I do different sales all of the time depending on the craft fair depending on what items I think are going to do the best at that craft fair but you want to do some type of deal or coupon or sale number one it's going to drive more people into your booth especially if you have that displayed on like a chalkboard sign right outside your booth or you have a big sign in your booth or people walking by just see a crowd in your booth because they're looking through the sale bins or whatever or if you don't want to do that you could also do uh, spend a certain amount and you get like a free little gift like they get a little freebie if they spend you know 25 50 bucks in your booth or whatever anything that entices them to spend more but they also feel like they're getting a deal or a sale will be better for your customers and you'll end up selling more product in doing so i've always noticed if i have like a coupon or a sale or some type of deal going on i sell more of that product every single time and when you're coming up with these ideas i just recommend that you kind of get in the mindset of a customer we've all been customers before we all do grocery shopping and stuff when you're at the grocery store and you see something that you were going to buy anyways for you know half off or buy one get one free or 
something, what do you do? You stock up. Whether you needed it or not, because it was on sale, you were more inclined to get that product then, in which case that store made more money off of you from doing that sale. So just think of it that way. Put yourself in a customer mindset and think about what you would be enticed to buy or what would make you want to spend more if you were in the customer's shoes at that craft fair. Now, some other tips that I recommend is that you have at least two to three payment options for your customers. I personally have five. They can pay with cash. They can pay with their card using my little square reader. Like you can literally swipe your debit card in it. I just hook it up to my iPad. But then I also offer PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo if they want to pay that way digitally. So the more payment options you offer, the better. But I would say two to three is a really good spot. You don't have to do all of them. But if I only had two to pick from, I would obviously say, cash and the square reader where they can swipe their card because if you allow people to use their debit cards then they're typically willing to spend more because a lot of people only get out a certain amount of cash to spend at the craft fair so if you can offer that they use their debit or credit cards they're probably going to spend more another random tip that i recommend is that you should befriend all of your little vendor neighbors around you at these craft shows and markets whether they're competitors or not whether they're selling the same products or not especially if you're doing a lot of these craft fairs or markets by yourself if you have to like run to the bathroom really fast or run to your car to get something really fast you can have someone kind of keep an eye on your booth for you while you're gone we should all help each other out when we can. You know what I mean? The more you uplift one another, the better the experience is going to be for you. And then on that note, I also recommend that you don't pack up early. Like a lot of the times I start seeing people pack up like, you know, 30, 20 minutes away from the end of the craft fair. They go ahead and start packing up and start loading up their cars. And I highly recommend that you don't do that because I can't tell you how many sales I've made after the craft fair was like done and closed because other vendors that didn't get a chance to leave their booth finally are all done and now they're able to shop and they'll walk around and maybe they saw something that they wanted out of your booth earlier but they weren't able to get it now that they're done they can come and make a purchase from you i can't tell you how much money i've made from other vendors that want to support me at the end of the craft fair so don't pack up early you never know when someone is going to run to your booth at the very end now this is another huge tip that i recommend everyone take into account and that is that you should have a variety of products at different price points you really want something for everyone maybe someone only has 20 bucks to spend do you have an item that's less than $20 in your booth for example a lot of the things that I sell in my booth are tumblers t-shirts and car freshies now my tumblers and t-shirts are over $20 so I knew I wanted things that were less than $20 so then I started selling car freshies those are less than $20 then I wanted something even cheaper because a lot of the customers in my booth were moms or aunts or grandmas or whatever and they had their kids kids or grandkids or nieces or nephews with them and I wanted the kids to have a little something. Number one, you're getting them to spend more money in your booth but not a lot of booths are catered to the kids and a lot of people have kids with them at these events. So I started putting out like little buckets by my checkout station that had um, keychains and stuff and stickers and little pens, just little things that the kids can grab that they would want, but everything was less than $2. So if the kids had money to spend, they had enough money to buy something they didn't get left out or if the parents wanted to give something to the kid because they were being super good or whatever. So I just have a ton of different products that range in different price ranges so that there would be something for everyone. Another tip that I'm gonna highly recommend that it might sound kind of weird, but I promise it's gonna benefit you in the future is to eavesdrop on your customers' conversations in your booth. I'm obviously not talking about the conversations that you're having with your customers. I'm strictly talking about the conversations that your customers are having with other people, whether that's another customer in your booth, or maybe they're talking to their husband or their boyfriend or their sister, or maybe they're on the phone with somebody. I can't tell you how much constructive criticism or comments I've heard and then I just kind of took a mental note of that and then implemented that next time or how many product ideas I got from listening to other customers' conversations. You obviously don't have to listen to all of the feedback that you get, but you should definitely take into consideration the things that 
can make your booth better or make you more sales in the future. For example, my first few craft fairs where I had a huge tumbler display on one side of my booth, I had a bunch of customers like looking at them and being like, oh, I really wish she had this one in different color or I really wish she had more options for this tumbler or I wish she had more sizes for this tumbler. Anything that I heard for a future product that can make me money, I added a little note in my phone and I just started taking notes. Everything that I heard, or maybe I listened to some customers kind of sifting through my t-shirts and I was out of a size, then I would make a note, okay, I need to have more mediums next time. And with that, I also recommend that after every single craft fair, you make some personal notes for yourself, things that you need to bring next time things that you want to do differently for your displays maybe more products or sizing or whatever you want to have for next time anything that you can improve on or things that you forgot that you don't want to forget next time make a note of so that you can always improve with each craft fair and market that you do it's only going to make it easier each time you do it and just make a better experience for yourself and your customers and my last tip for displays is you do not have to spend a ton of money on your displays you can DIY almost any type of display that fits your needs exactly and then lastly I just want to give you guys some general advice so that you have a more enjoyable craft fair starting with obviously you're gonna want to be friendly and outgoing and smiling you don't want to be back in your craft booth corner sitting down with your arms crossed and a scowl on your face that's not inviting that's not friendly that's not welcoming I would walk right by you. You wanna be friendly and engaging, but you obviously don't wanna be like hovering and overbearing or pressure the customers too much because that could also drive them away. So you obviously wanna find, you know, that healthy medium where you're kinda of in between the two, where you're available if they need you, if they have any questions, you're not overbearing them, not pressuring them to buy anything, but you're also being super friendly, inviting for more people to walk into your booth. You obviously don't want any customers to walk out of your booth because they didn't feel welcome there. Now, another piece of advice that I have to give you that I'm definitely guilty of is don't compare yourself to other vendors, especially if you are just starting out. There's always going to be someone that has better prices than you, better products than you, better displays than you, maybe they're more established than you are. In whatever case, you don't want to compare yourself to another vendor and then get yourself discouraged because it's gonna set the tone for your entire craft fair. And if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, you're going to find more faults with yourself and that's just gonna make the experience that much worse for you. All you can do is do your best and improve for next time. There's always room for improvement. And on that note, don't don't overthink everything because if you're like me and obsessively overthinking about everything is just going to stress yourself out even more that's not doing you any good and you're just gonna psych yourself out even if the craft fair doesn't go as well as you planned maybe you didn't make as much money as you hoped maybe a product that you thought was gonna do really well didn't sell as much as you thought whatever the case is don't get disappointed and discouraged if it doesn't go as planned there's only so much that you can control sometimes it's just a matter of your niche of customers isn't at that craft fair just remember that we all started at square one from some point there's no reason to get discouraged you can always improve and do better next time and then the last piece of advice that i have to give you is if someone does give you some constructive criticism or or maybe they're just giving you some feedback or maybe it's just a rude customer saying like a negative comment about you or your booth or your products in general either way don't take those comments personally take the constructive criticism for what it is if you want to implement it and improve for next time but if it's like just a negative comment you have to let that bounce off of you and not take it personally or discourage you from doing another event because at the end of the day you can't please everyone and haters are gonna hate no matter what so just be true to you be yourself sell the products that you want to sell 
stand by the prices that you want to set them at and don't let anyone dim your light or discourage you in any way because it is hard work being a small business owner a lot of people don't get it unless they've done it themselves and being a vendor at craft fairs and markets is hard work and unless they've done it they don't understand how hard it is and how much work it is so like i said unless they're giving you like real constructive criticism that you can improve on don't take anything personally because again you can't please everyone and at the end of the day it's your business your products and your booth so with that that's where i'm gonna leave you guys all of the links to things that i use in my craft fairs will be down in the video description below for you guys if you want to check that out if you guys are wanting me to do more craft fair videos like maybe show you guys some diy displays maybe do some tutorials on that or if there's like something else that you guys want me to do a video on please let me know i was also thinking about doing a video about becoming a vendor in a permanent storefront I personally have a booth at a local antique mall that I sell a ton of my products at and it has just become another income stream for me. So if that's something that you guys want more information on, I can do another video on that or whatever else you guys want, let me know down in the comments below. If you've done craft fairs in the past and you have some tips that I left out, leave those in the comments as well for our newbies that are watching this video. I think they would really appreciate that. And as always, if you guys like this video, please let me know Know that you liked it by giving me a big thumbs up if you have any questions or comments feel free to drop a comment down below and if you're watching this video and you're not already subscribed to my channel make sure you click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on my future videos i would greatly appreciate the follow thanks for watching i'll catch you guys next time